Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Being Real. I'm Joe. Get used to the face, get used to the pace, because we are moving quickly so that we can get you further down your path to, that's right, financial independence. So let's jump right into today's topic, which is going to be a part one. We're going to be talking about what else? Oh, the old hit of a do. <laughs> creative financing in real estate. Everybody's heard of creative financing in real estate. It's the buzzword. It's the one that makes everybody happy. It's the one all the gurus keep sending you messages about and telling you about in their thumbnails and their come to their webinars and come make a million dollars through creative financing. What the hell does it mean? What is creative financing? I mean, seriously, I'm, let's, we're going to talk about this today. Creative financing is a lot of things. It is a lot of things, but there's also several things that it is not. And these guys that are talking about uh, lease options, for example, um, it's, those aren't those aren't creative financing in, in the real estate market. The, that's it's a different model. It's 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 a different strategy, and it does work. But they're, that's not creative financing. Creative financing. In real estate, or actually in, in anything, but sp specifically in real estate, is when you have something that you have to do in order to make the transaction work. That's out of the box, out of the box that we all heard about, right? What is the standard box? Standard box is conventional financing. And conventional financing is you go down to the bank, you apply for a loan, they give you 80% or whatever they give you. Standard 80% loan, you come up with 20% down, you go buy the house, you get your terms from the bank, and it's done. And that's conventional financing. Now, in my opinion, everything that goes on outside of that is creative financing. Because if a bank isn't able to lend on a property, or a bank isn't able to lend to a person, or both, then you have to have creative financing involved in one of its many, many, many forms so that all parties are served. And write that down. It's all parties are served. It's not someone coming in trying to get creative to take advantage of a situation for themselves. It's someone who's going to come in and get creative and create a solution for everybody involved. And that's the way we do things. And if that's not the way you're doing things, then go ahead and just skip right through the video because that's not what we're about. We're about doing it the right way. And the first thing I need to tell, I mean, <laughs> I'm jump all over the board today, is, you know what? You need an attorney involved in a real estate transaction. If you're doing any type of creative financing, and anybody that tells you, no, you don't need it, here's the contract, and here's the, yeah, I can give you the contracts too. Anybody that tells you not to do that, uh, you know what? You need to walk away from that because that, it, it, one, it's shady, it's, it's just on the wrong side of things. And if it, isn't able to withstand the scrutiny of an attorney, then you shouldn't be doing it because sooner or later it's going to bite you in the butt. Period. End of sentence. So again, uh, we're only going to be in part one, so I want to keep you keep you entertained. So let's jump into a, a couple of theories of, of creative financing. And creative financing, again, is, is just coming in and being able to think outside of that box so that you can get a property transaction done. Uh, I can give you an example uh, right now of something that we're working on. And that is a uh, duplex that we came in and I can tell you, sure, I can go ahead and tell you, the purchase price on this thing was $400,000. And $400,000, and it needed a lot of work, a lot of work. Right here in California, so stuff is extremely expensive. Uh, $400,000, and we needed a whole lot of work. Sure, go on, immediately bring in a lender and say, okay, we need our 80%. Well, the lender's not going to lend on this, period. So start right there. It has nothing to do with me or the company or anybody else. The lender's not going to lend on it. You can't get a bank to lend on this. And again, if you haven't seen my other videos, go back and watch them. There's reasons why banks can't do things. That's because they're strapped with rules that are handed by them to them by the United States government, and for good reason. <laughs> so their depositors' money is safe. Uh, they're FDIC insured for a reason. They have to follow certain rules and there's no way they're going to lend on this property. There's just too much work to be done. They don't want it back at 80%. Uh, they don't care. They're, they're going to lose money on that. It does all day long. Plus banks are not in the business of taking properties back. They do when they don't want to, but it's not their, their thing. That's not what they want to do. So I've got to go out and we've got to put together private financing through this. 
and private financing is easy enough. You just come out and you're going to get the 70% loan and just as a matter of anything, because 70% is your standard on these things. So you're going to get 70, but we need another 30%. Nobody wants to come out of pocket. So we still have repairs to do, right? Okay. So where's that other 30% coming from? Well, in this particular case, we have, I have uh, a certain individual that I work with on an ongoing basis. And these are the type of people that you will meet when you get into real estate. And when you start going to your real estate investment clubs, and when you start just being involved in real estate, these are the people that you meet over time and they become part of your portfolio. And I met this guy actually years ago and his only thing is that he just wants more money than what he's making on his money in the bank. And right now that's nothing. So I easily pitched him the idea and showed him, you know, what the real value was, what's the after repair value. And we've done deals before, but if we hadn't done a deal before, I could have easily pitched this out to someone to come in with that other 30% down that we needed because the value was in the property. Remember the deal is everything folks. If it's skinny, if it's thin, I don't care if it's your best friend or it's your mother, it doesn't matter. They're not going to do the deal because if it doesn't look super, super juicy, people don't want to be involved and they shouldn't be involved. So in this particular case, there's a great back end to this. There's someone had to do the work. We've done the work before. He's seen us do the work before. And again, if he hadn't, it still would have been very sellable. So staying on topic, we've got our 70% uh, financing and we have the other 30% that comes in from our private investor and the private investor is going to get his share. Go back to my other videos. If you haven't seen how, what you should be offering the investors as a share. And by the way, there's a lot of ways to do that too. And he's come in, we put the hundred percent in, we're just finishing up the remodeling right now. And we're in contract for this thing. And already if we can get it done, <laughs> this thing's supposed to close by the end of the month. This again is October of 2022. And we're out. So getting that deal done took creative financing. And that is what creative financing is. And there's gonna, we're going to have to go through several examples of this. But it's any time that you have a situation that is not going to fit in your standard normal box. So you're going to have to come up with a way to do this. And you're going to have to be the person to solve the problem. Because let me tell you right now, sellers are not real good at solving problems. They want their problems solved. And if you can come to them in a comprehensive way that makes sense to them, not sleazy and not you being the one trying to make the money off of them, but you providing a solution. It's going to be well received. Even if there's a real estate agent involved, it's going to be well received and you don't have to do the crazy, crazy stuff that so many people are talking about. You know, seller financing, seller financing is great. We're going to do a whole topic on that. A lot of people, people can't do seller financing. So you've got to be able to have this whole whole myriad of things in your box that you can pull out for this creative financing. In this example, it was pretty straightforward. And most of the time, it's pretty straightforward and it's something you can do. You just have to know what those tools are. So you use the tools that are appropriate for the situation. And we're going to go more into this. So that's enough for today. That's part one. Hopefully by the time you see this, part two is up because I really want to get into some more examples of this and give you some more detail and some more words uh, terms and phrases that are going to be appropriate so that you can learn more about creative financing in real estate. So definitely stay tuned. We're going to have the next one up real soon. Thanks so much. We'll talk soon.